Right, hello YouTubers. Uh, we have now today got a casting lesson. Uh, former English uh, UK uh, fishing champion, or at least he tells me he is. We're just about to find out in a second. Uh, he's over there sorting his kit out. Um, follow on. Uh, if you want to learn some pendulum casting, some ground casting, uh, this is the man to teach you. So enjoy what's going to happen. Right, my name's Paul Humble. Uh, I'm here to show Big Mark here how like pendulum cast. I've got a zip next. Codpole, uh, which is a very old rod, designed and built by Neil McKellar. Uh, this is my next. Got a 65CT rocket loaded with 15 pound line and 60 pound leader. I'll just do a few gentle casts just to give you an idea of what it's all about. It's a bit of a baby that. So, how much line do you reckon you've got on there now? Uh, that's short at the moment, probably about, uh, I don't know, 280 something like that. Right, 280. Okay, yeah. what's, the, what's the furthest you've cast? Being 251. Whoa! <laughs> With a fish out there? No. <laughs> <laughs> Not in the field. <laughs> Right, Paul's going to show us how it's done. We'll let him walk over there and get set up because I'm not standing anywhere near him. Right, when you're ready, mate. Right, that was a gentle flick out, just to see, uh, see what's happened on the reel. Right, okay, I think you can see that. Let's get out of the out of the Right. That was a that was a gentle flick. Yeah, probably I don't know, about 180, something like that. That was a gentle flick, right, okay, lovely. Right, that's, that's sorry, you say that's 12 pound line yeah, on there. 12 pound, not 15. Right. So yeah, therefore it's a lot thinner, so you get a lot more line on the reel. Yeah. I take it you don't get so much uh, catching the wind either, do no, you? That's right, and also when you're fishing, fishing with 12 pound, you don't catch so much of the tide either. Yeah. But when yep. you're winding in, when you get to the very last part of your, you pick up the leader, always put the leader knot off to one side. Absolutely. These, the reason being is when you cast, your thumb's wrapped round there, yep. and if you have the leader knot in the middle, it will go right down through the middle of your thumb. Yeah, and it'll hurt. And, and it'll really hurt, and it'll open yeah. the end of your thumb up. Yeah. So always put your leader knot off to one side. Yeah. Well, so what was the other tip with the, uh, that you were saying about putting some leather over the yeah, reel? Yeah, you can do a, uh, a strap, which comes from under here, underneath the reel seat, and up around here so you can lay it over and it helps you grip the spool right. better. Yeah, okay. Because with yeah. that sort of cast, you, you develop so much power, yeah. the chances are that it will fly off over there if you're not gripping the... Yeah, sure. So it'll fly off to your right all the time. Yeah. i say the other thing last week and that, I cast out with a wet thumb. And, and it uh, slipped. Yeah, and it slipped. <laughs> it went about two miles up in the air and about ten yards forward. <laughs> yeah, you can't really control it when it's wet. Yeah, no, that's a useful tip that, Paul. Right. Excellent. What do you want next? Right, uh, do you want to go for another cast and I'll film it from another angle? Righto. Right, okay, I don't know if you can see the weight there. Yeah, that's sitting probably, well, uh, horizontal with Paul's head at the moment. Right, that is just going and going and going. Right, okay. Not quite sure how long that is up in the air, but that seemed to be quite a while. Yeah, go on. Yeah. If you get a hose pipe, turn the tap on, hold the hose pipe like that and lift it up. And as you lift it up from like 10 degrees through 20 degrees, it slowly goes out further and further and further. Once you get it up to about 43, between 43 and 47 degrees is when it's at its furthest. Right, okay. So if you start going over 47 degrees, it starts coming back towards you. Yeah. So ideally, when you release your lead, you want to try and release it at an angle between 43 and 47 degrees. So it's got the natural climb. Yeah. And then the natural decline. Yeah, sure. So this is where you see that Henry Gilby pose at the end where he's yeah. trying to get that angle. <laughs> <laughs> On the angle of the dangle. <laughs> Bless old Henry. Yeah. Look, you've got to get the foot stomp as well at the end. Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> right, I'm going to be standing quite close to Paul here and he's going to try and take us through a little bit of the uh, of how this all worked. Um, I think you can see there. Right, what's the drop you've got on your your weight there? Well, on this one, I I prefer a long because I've got a reel at the bottom. I prefer a long drop. Yeah. So I've like when I'm car, casting the, I suppose it's to about there, which is about like ten foot. Yeah. About okay. Ten foot. About ten foot drop. Yeah. Um, I mean, some people use a lot shorter drop, but if you're using a shorter rod, 
the computers are short to drop, but it's a faster cast. Yeah. With a long rod, yeah. it's a lot slower. And you can actually, I don't know, just with a long rod, you do seem to get more distance just by going through the motions of doing the cast. Sure. Everybody's got their own way of throwing the rod out, bringing the rod back, to get the legs into the cast, the neutral point above their head. Yeah. The cast. But it's awkward. Some people, when they do it, the arms are right up here all bent. You can't bring the rod round your arm bent. Your arms have got to be fairly straight so that when you actually get to the neutral position of the, the ledge, bring it round. The arms are actually behind the body. They're going to turn from the power stroke. Right, okay, you yeah. You can't do it your arms are like this. Yeah. But ideally, it's, it's getting the lead away. Hang on, let's do this. Look, look at it, look Not with me here, mate, please. Get the lead away from the body. If you notice where my arms are, my arms are not dead straight, but in a castable position like this, so that when I bring the rod round, my arms are behind me, so when I put the power in at this point, yeah. you're really forcing the rod over. All this business about doing this, all it's for is to get the lead up there so that when you drag the lead down and around, all you're doing is compressing the rod, locking the rod up. Yeah, okay. There's no power in that part of the car whatsoever. Yeah. The power is when you get it to here. Some people, like myself, I actually step round sometimes when I'm going for a big car. Step round on it so my arms are behind my body. But when I bring it over. Right, okay. Got that whistle past my ear up. <laughs> You really get your body behind it, get your body weight behind it, which puts more power into the cast. Okay, so what are you doing with the flick then? I notice that as, that, as the weight goes out to your right there, you're yeah, well, flicking it back over yourself. Yeah, well, myself, I mean, the arms start one to one to one to the bed. Yeah. Push out to the top arm, push down. Right, and you, you can't, I don't think you'll be able to see that at home, but as that, that weight is actually being flicked out now, down. Right, it's coming down and it's, that's done a complete loop over the top. But when it gets to the top, it gets to a point where it's completely neutral. Yeah. There's no weight there at all. Yeah. That is the ideal time to actually start bringing the rod down yeah. around your body. So it starts loading up the rod. Right. The rod from the hip yeah, sorry. <laughs> that's when you start loading up the rod for your cast. Yeah. It's not the actual back part, it's not actually. Yeah. Doing anything really. All it's doing is loading the rod up. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, very useful. I, mean, I should be trying this on an cars, empty beach. Pedal cast is virtually only a variation of South African cast. South African cast is basically laid out on the beach like that, you drag it round and then deliver it. So basically right. the South African cast is the last part of the pendulum cast. Is this the South African cast? Is that the same as the Portsmouth cast or the Brighton cast? Is that a very, very similar. There's not yeah. a lot of difference. I don't know if you can see, the weight is right at the uh, right at the end there. See if we can zoom in a bit. I don't think you're going to see that. No. I'm not no. <laughs> I mean, there's the rod end. Uh, you're looking at... How, how far's the drop there? About six foot? Uh, no, a bit longer no, than that. No, about ten? About yeah. About eight foot. Yeah. So it's laid out flat behind. Yeah. And, and you keep... Basically, just pull it round your body. And then... Straight over. Right, okay. And I heard, I remember you telling me ages ago, and that these guys used to turn up with um, some guttering. Yeah, you can. I mean, some of the boys that were doing it, like fishing with it, they, they'd lay guttering down, lay the lead out, as if they were going to cast, lay it in a piece of guttering, and then pull it so the, the lead, because it's got grips on it, would run down inside the guttering. Yeah, so that makes sense. Break the, yeah. uh, the grips out. Yeah, sure, okay. Yeah, on a stony beach, beach like this as well, as you can see. Probably a good idea. But laid out flat like that. Right, do you want to do, do one like that, Paul? Yeah, go on. Right, I'm standing back again. Oh, do you hear that go? Right, that's just land. I just saw the splash on that. That's quite a way out. Right, it did look to be a lot of effort in that, but yeah, let's have a look at the reel. <laughs> look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Effective cast. <laughs> He's got another one for us now. Um, if you can see that down there, what's happened? The right, it's flicking out. And he's dropping down there. 
think right. I'll just about see it. I think I can. I think I've got that. It's just, just a variation right. of a red clump. Yeah. That whistle passed me again. I mean, that's just right. Just flicking it out. And that's just a flick. Again, that's well. <laughs> what have you got there? One thirty. One thirty. One forty. Something yeah. like that. Yeah. If you want the big fish, you've got to get the distance. <laughs> Not all the time. Well, it's true. Yeah, we've got to go. I mean, there's a gully here just behind the sovereign centre, which is uh, somewhere down that way. Oh, a bit of overfilm. Just behind the sovereign centre, the swimming pool there, and that. just out here. Around about there somewhere, there's a little gully, I believe. And the, the cod and the bass run through there. Yeah, well, that's. Uh, well, that over there, they call it the green path. Green path, right. So if you're ever down in Eastbourne, get behind the green path. And uh, I'll show you just right down the very, very end there. That is uh, Eastbourne Sanitation Works, or commonly called around here Fort Poo. <laughs> uh, that's uh, quite a popular place actually behind there. Uh, being southwesterly, uh, predominant wind, so it's blowing from my, well, my right to left, as we've got today. And uh, a lot of people fish fairly near that. Uh, you may think it's not the best place to fish, but actually there can be quite a bit of fish down there. Yeah, it's got a lot of tide down there. A lot of tide, so it runs, so the fish are down there. Just behind that is actually uh, the Sovereign Harbour. Uh, you've got the main gate there. Going into the outer harbour. Uh, there's uh, Fort Fun. If you want to come down, bring the kids, go fishing, leave them in Fort Fun for a day, you'll be quite happy. Yeah. <laughs> that's the outfit from the Princess Park. The kids, we used to fish off of there. It used to be a little bit longer. You get a lot of fresh water come out of there and you get to enjoy the summer. Right. A lot of mullet. A lot, a lot of mullet. Yeah. That's a good fun there. Right, Joe's out again, Paul. Right, hang on. To start from the beginning. Right, so you've got your rod. Push it out. Out. Top one, down. And it's right. all done. Put his hand here. This hand goes up and down. Yeah. Right, push it out. The lead reaches its distance. That's it. The lead will go right up there. Right, so it's flick out. Come back. So swing out. Push down. Right, that weight's on the loop. Right, okay. Yeah, that's all it is. So as soon as that weight is right at the, its peak, if you like. Yeah, well, when you basically, once you get used to doing this, you feel weight, 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 no weight at all. It's yeah. when it gets to that very top bit, yeah. when it loses all its weight, that's what you it up. Right, okay. You pick it up beforehand, you snatch from the rod tip, you don't load the rod tip up. Right? Yeah. So, so as soon as it's light. That dead, that dead point, yeah. you pick it up then, then it, 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 the weight comes onto the rod tip slowly. Dead. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you pick it up too early, you've still got weight on the rod when you're flipping when the, 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 the lens travelling. Yeah. You don't load the rod up properly. Same thing right. as dropping it, you're picking up. Yeah, so you're trying to get all that potential energy into that rod tip as much yeah. as you can. But basically all you're doing with that business there and then pulling it around as I said before, yeah. you're loading the rod up yeah. so it's actually putting the bend in it. Right. So there's no power in it until you actually get the rod behind you to the point where you're going to tuck it over your shoulder. That's when you put the power in. Yeah. yeah? Right, no, that's great. Well, I hope that's some useful tips. You've got, yeah. you got another one, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> when a lot of people when they're pendulum casting, when they start pulling it round, they start clipping the beach. I mean, their immediate thing is to shorten the drop or speed up. The other, the other way round. Mm. First off, if you keep clipping the beach, actually slow down. If you clip the beach, then go longer with your drop. But try and have a, a mark on your rod somewhere, a little bit of sticky tape or something, so you can drop the, the lead to the same point every time. Yeah. So keep clipping the beach, move that forward sticky bit, a bit further down, the length of your drop by 8 to 10 inches. Right. Until, and slow down. Don't yeah. speed up, just slow down. Unless, of course, you've got a short rod, if you're doing it with a short rod, then it is a faster car than a long rod. Yeah, sure. Yeah, because yeah. you've got to move that quicker. Yeah. yeah. Right. So you still have fun. Excellent. Excellent. Right, we'll see if we can get this one and that. I say it is difficult to show this uh, via film and that, but he's going he's gonna to wind up for this one. So... I don't know if you can hear the whip of that rod then. Is it a seagull? <laughs> <laughs> I 
Right, I take it when you're actually casting out, you're, you're feathering the uh, line with your thumb? No. Oh, you're not? You just let no. it run free? No, because it's got centrifugal brakes. Oh, okay, right. So and it does it all for uh, you? Yeah, but it's also the oil as well. Right. If you've got oil with your bearings. Okay, what oil do you use in there then? Uh, normally it's three in one. Just three in one, yeah? Yeah. I've heard some people using um, sewing machine oil and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, you can do, it's extremely thin. Yeah. It's okay during the winter when it's cold. Yeah. And uh, the viscosity of the oil is quite thick. But during the summer months, you want a thicker oil, like the three in one. Right, okay. Obviously because of the warmth. Yeah. The oil then gets thinner, therefore less oil in, in the bearing it. Right. It's, uh, like the oil actually acts as a slight brake. Yeah, okay. As well as having your centrifugal brakes. Yeah. <laughs> right, that's excellent. Okay, so you used to fish for the for England, was it? Yeah, I used to I fished a lot of competition for EFSA. Um, I won the the TVS Championship uh, out in the Grand Canarias, and then I won. Then I qualified again for the final again the following year. Uh, fish for the Aqua Club. Uh, won the All England many years ago. Uh, oh, the list many, goes too on. Many things to remember. Right, so right, okay, so I mean this uh, this speaks volume. So if you need some fishing tips, uh, leave Don't us some talk comments. To me. <laughs> <laughs> Just leave us some comments at the end of this video. Um, I say I'll, I'll, I'll be in contact with Paul, and if uh, any can do anything to help you, he will. Uh, so thanks for watching, guys. Hasta la vista. <laughs>